man. What up? What's up, Travis, man? How's it going? I'm good. You Thanks know, for joining me, man. Oh, this is going to be some fun tonight. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ed running from it. I'm like, Ed was yeah. running from us tonight. He's working, I think, or something. He's got some excuse as usual, you know. <laughs> and Ed knows what I was going to say. Yeah. We're going to settle this tonight. 871 <laughs> is the better <laughs> album. Confessions is not. A great album. We got we, we to gotta get into that at some point in this conversation. Don't worry. <laughs> but hold up. First off, is this the purple room behind you? Yes, sir. I got to get the tour. Is there any way I can get a quick tour, man? I don't know if I'm ever going to make it there at this rate. Um, You know, it's still some construction on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Why is it called the purple room? Okay, so this is, this, is what, this is funny. Okay, this is how it started. So, like, about almost 10 years ago. I had two other partners um, that were partners with me on the studio. And so um, and this, is, this, is, this is kind of funny how it all turned out. So they had went behind my back and spoke to Demetria and Roger Bob and had them come in the studio. And um, they played some of their music and she wasn't feeling their music. Right. So um, they came back and told me and I was like, well, dang, you know, we got to make sure the studio looks good next time that somebody comes through. So we were trying to decide what color we were going to paint the studio. That right. I lost, I lost by a vote. <laughs> we ended up painting the studio purple. Right. And then, you know what I'm saying, history, you see me and Demetrius still hooked back up. Yeah. And made a great album. But from there, it was like at the same time that we did it, um, we recorded Cases out. Well, we recorded the uh, record Case with um, Heaven's Door and recorded uh, um, Raheem's um, song, like recorded Temperatures Rising in that studio. And from there, the Purple Room credits were on the album, and it was like, well, <laughs> got to run from it. Hey, Chantel. <laughs> so let me ask you this. <clears throat> you know, because um, this interview is going to run on the site as well. I just want to make sure we get as much exposure as possible for this. Um, you, you know, take first? us up, up to speed with over the <laughs> past few years. You, you've had a bunch of placements in the past year or so, and um, some of our favorite R&B singers. Take us up to speed with some of your favorite placements you've had in that time. Oh man, I, I, man, it's been it's been great getting back in the studio with with like Jay Holiday. That was amazing. Like you know, because we we've made good music together. Of course, working with Raheem and you know some of the other stuff that we have coming out. Um, me and Case have been grinding it out the past few months, getting ready for this this his new project. And I mean, he's gotten some he's gotten some some heat on there, and some other people have been sending him some heat. And then of course, bro, I have literally and you know what? It's so crazy because. I think this is the first time I've gotten you on. Like, we've actually talked. And it's so funny yeah. because I've been working on Demetria. And I, it's like every time I start feeling like, okay, the album is finished, I keep pulling my faders down, mixing it again. I keep telling her, yeah. like, I'm going to make sure this, this album hits harder this time. And I'm taking my time with mixing it. And I just told her the other day, I'm still trying to find, like, one or two more songs. Right. The album is finished. She's already fin she's filmed, like, five videos from the album. and Wow, really? She's, she's locked and loaded. She's just been busy with yeah. the TV show stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because she's, I know Damn. she really wants to get out on the road and, and actually, you know, do her thing. Right. She has a, she has a great album. What's up, Daniel? <laughs> you know Daniel. what song you did that's been stuck in my head, though? You did for Case with Strawberry. Oh. <laughs> and I, it, it's just, I love that one, man. You know, okay. from his therapy album. He's probably not going to tell you Strawberry is about his wife. <laughs> really? Strawberry is his new nickname for his wife. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, Trust me, he's got some stuff on the new album. Like, he's just been laying a lot of melodies and laying a lot of craziness. Dude, when I tell you that he's he's hungry, like, as though he's never had an album out, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. dope, man. Like, We're Case, looking I keep telling him he's, he has, he has this, this record on his um, that he's done so far um, about back home, like Mount Vernon. I'm like, dude, you've got to drop that record. <laughs> Like it's talking about his his, yeah. his his like his history and stuff. I'm like, dude, you gotta drop that record. You gotta just right. like, like just play it on social media one time and let everybody just be like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's dope, man. Love case. We just did an article on on some of the you know best songs he had that never came out of singles, and uh, <laughs> just a reminder of how much of a strong discography he has. So, you know, I know you're heavily involved with his newer project. So, you know, major respect and mm -hmm. what we're working on with him. Oh no, thanks, man. Yeah, you, yeah. you need to get him on. That he is like a music historian. Like I sit yeah. there with him some nights, and it's like he will tell you stuff about music. You'll be like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, 
like we have this thing now where we're going back and forth like trying to find exclusive like acapellas because like we just have to like top each other and it's like kind of funny damn <laughs> dude is a music yeah. historian. like you'll be surprised like his musical IQ is really high like you yeah he'll surprise you you know what's crazy though when i think about case you mentioned mount vernon you know he's a new yorker originally yeah. man everyone leaves new york everyone goes to atlanta everyone goes to la there's no one i'm here in new york city there's no one there's no artist left here man why why is everyone leaving it was kind of funny is me being in North Carolina. Everybody from North Carolina was going up north to New York. Really? Yeah. I think me and my group, we we left and went down south. I think we were the only ones that it, that it went to Atlanta to get on versus yeah. everybody just was going to New York. So it's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> I can't explain it. I love New York, but, you know. Yeah. And a reminder, 8701 is the better album. Well, you want? Let's talk about it right now. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna force my hand. I just so, want to, so I just want to throw that out there. Just, just for, the, for, for the listeners, for the viewers, we had this debate. You know, when Travis was on our on our podcast a couple of years ago, it must have been now, and um, we were just debating Usher's 8701 verse Confessions, which is the, the stronger album. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, for me personally, you know, the general fans just seem to think that Confessions is the one. Yeah, I've always strongly felt that it's eighty seven oh one, slightly, slightly. I mean, his but, vocals sounded better. I mean, I'm not taking anything away. I'm just saying it. Just the vocals were doper. I love the music on there. Mm -hmm. I think people were just thank you, Daniel. See, somebody else has sent somebody else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, yeah. it was just a better album. It was a better album. I think everybody just rode off of the hype of um. Yeah. Plus, Confessions was a very long album. It was in my opinion, it could have if he took some of the songs off it. Yeah, I, like it could have been a much stronger project. Like it just kind of watered it down just a touch. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's not a classic, but yeah, it, was a great, it was definitely a great album. But right again, 8701 better album. <laughs> I, I see people are agreeing with us in the chat. So I mean, that might be. I, mean, I wish Ed was here though. I mean, it's not the same without Ed to, to you know have the final word on this, but <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we can we, the song by song. It's just yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. The the, the uh oh, somebody's mad. <laughs> My brother in law like, like no, but um, uh oh. Yeah, but I mean, the Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis stuff that was kind of like on the deluxe edition was dope. Should have right. been the, the, should have been on the the original Confessions. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> because we can we can run into all of our debates because you know you know yeah. the other debate that we were talking about earlier and. It needs to be said. What was that? <laughs> when everybody's doing all of these these songwriter and producer battles. Oh no! I, I, you want me to say it? I can. I feel, go, free, go ahead. I feel free enough don't, to say it. Don't get me in trouble now. I'm not gonna get you. I'm not gonna get you in trouble. I just want anybody else that sees this when you put it up on the website. I want everybody to know that this statement <laughs> is <on> me. <laughs> yeah. Babyface should not be matched up with Teddy Riley. <laughs> Babyface should find a way to get a camera into the prison <laughs> and get matched oh, up no. and go pin oh, for no. pin. And that's the battle that we should be seeing. I, I said, I said, what? <laughs> Listen, man, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of sad. We, we can't even, and you know, I got so we can't talk about R. Kelly anymore. You know, that. it's, um, it is kind of sad it, because that, you know, I'm not saying he didn't, what he did wasn't horrendous. He doesn't deserve what happened to him, but it sucks that, that's one of the top legends of all time in R and B, and we can't even talk about it anymore. Just here's from that my, here's perspective. My, here's my feelings on it. Everybody in, in everybody in in music, you've you've heard the you've heard things about him. Mm -hmm. I feel like going after him now, the way that they're doing it, is like you going after the neighborhood bully who's probably been murdering people, and now the police try to trump up a speeding ticket charge. It's like, dude, we he's had like a 20 year head start. Like we known this. Yeah. Like we saw the video. Like we know this. Thank I'm yeah. like, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it it's like a, a lot of our music heroes are tortured. You know, there's I mean there's always a story behind it. You know, they're always tortured. So I mean I'm not condoning anything he did because I mean there's some people that have really gotten hurt. So you know. What can I say? Well, but we got to spin away from R. Kelly once again. Can't Let's talk about him. Let's go away from it. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. But I see, I see the comment from Boom Boom Caesar. Babyface and Teddy is not an equal match. It's not. I mean, who, who who are you taking though? Which side are you on? I'm I'm with Teddy. Really? I was on the other side. Dude, okay. Let's let's think about it. 
if Teddy goes back and just starts at the beginning and drops mm. the show with Dougie Fresh, that's gonna that's that's a hell of a start. I don't know, man. And then they face. Face, don't let don't let them drop the, the don't let them drop like my prerogative or the Bobby Brown or <laughs> like any of the guy stuff, like Keith Sweat's first album. Like, and then we're getting to like MJ. So once we start getting into like Remember the Time and Jam and all those records, I mean, mm -hmm. whew. Yeah, that's the what thing I'm is, though, New Jack Swing. That's it. New Jack Swing. <laughs> Babyface, though. Not I love, only I love did what he. Said, though. They said Babyface wrote 90% of the 90s. He did. And, though. and not only that, though, he, he was even into, into the pop scene as well. I yeah, mean, he no, wrote hits for, for like Madonna. Strong. He's definitely going to be strong. That Wait and Exhale soundtrack. Yeah. Hands down. So, <laughs> hands down. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be yeah. interesting. Okay, I'm gonna give you end of the road. I'm gonna give you end of the road. I give you that. <laughs> Somebody said end of the road, I'm gonna give you that. <laughs> I'm gonna give you that. We're gonna go well, to let me ask you go to let, the let me, soundtrack. <laughs> let me ask you this now. So we we've seen all these producer battles. Mm -hmm. We just seen tonight Pleasure P and Bobby V are gonna face off. Now this is kinda like the first we're seeing of of artists. Going back to back of their own songs, mm -hmm. so uh, how do you think that's going to go? Hmm. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's going to be interesting. I, 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 it's going to definitely be interesting. be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm, I mean, because it's going to be interesting. <laughs> I think I listen. No, I'm going to I'm going to do my political one. I don't know enough to really give you a. <laughs> listen man listen I, here's my thoughts here's my opinion I think it's dope that these artists are coming together and doing something yeah. like we should have seen this long ago though I mean to yeah. me artists should have been collaborating R&B to me is so segregated no one's no one has been working together collabing together mm -hmm. so finally we're seeing their artists are kind of forced to yeah because you know, they got nothing going on and I think it's cool I have no idea how that thing is going to go on Monday night with Bobby B and Pleasure P. Who's going to win? I feel like it's Tank easily versus Johnny Gill. Oh, <laughs> wow! Tank versus Johnny Gill. Wow. <laughs> Who even says that? <laughs> Can you explain that one in the comments, please? I'm. I'll, we'll wait on the thoughts <laughs> process that led you to that one. Because I mean. Are, that's a journey to get to that point, that intersection. How do we? It's get not even a fair battle because Johnny Gill is so much more history. You know, it's like yeah. he, he came on the eighty. So, yeah, that's that's, eesh. yeah, that's a hmm, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was that's... definitely one of the, that was definitely one of your friends. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. oh, somebody said um, strong voices. Interesting. No, I mean, yeah, I I can't mm. argue with that. Come on. Yeah, but come on. Come on. You don't think Johnny Gill's you don't think Johnny Gill's a strong voice? Chris Brown versus Trey Songs? I don't know. No. Maybe They've been debating that, you know, the Trey Songs. It's not fair. I mean Yeah, I don't I don't I'm just uh, I it's, I can't call it. I I really wouldn't even do that to Trey Songs. Trey Songs is he's he's dope in his own right, but I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. You know? Yeah. Song for song, because we'll be we'll be here for like two hours waiting on Chris to stop playing records. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chris, everybody, let's quit that right now. <laughs> right now, let's just stop. <laughs> people love these battles, man. I mean, people really get into this stuff. I think it's cool that artists are doing it. Yeah, that's you cool. know. But Tupac versus anybody, we don't, we're not ready to have that conversation. That's just no. That's well. First of all, this is an R and B program, right. you know. Um, so we're <laughs> I mean, that's just like saying, hey, you know. Aaliyah versus Beyonce. Let's stop it right now. You, right? <laughs> you better do it like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Let's just quit that. All right, man. So Travis, let me. Can I get your perspective on a few things as a producer? Sure. I want some insight from you. Sure. So you know, I always think about this all the time. You know, producers trying to land placements. Mm -hmm. You know, how has it been? How hard is the challenge of of landing a placement? Even landing because there's so many producers out there, especially nowadays, trying to work mm -hmm. with artists and land on albums you know in your experience mm -hmm. what is the challenge like uh, of getting on an album it's tougher now 
because to me, it's not so much about your relationships with the labels as much as it's about your relationship with the artist or maybe even their management team. So to me, that spreads things out versus right. 10 years ago. It's like if you knew one A&R in the building, you could kind of move around different buildings. Yeah. So now I feel like as a producer, you have to get the relationships with the artist. And I don't think it's I don't think it's. Um, you know, specific to an older producer versus a younger producer, because even a younger producer's got to work just as hard, sending out thousands of emails to different people to try to get somebody yeah. just to listen. So for me trying to navigate that, it's kind right. of funny to me. And I wish, I wish, um, <laughs> I wish Seuss to connect would jump in because I know he's going to say that. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Kane. Wait till y'all hear Jay Kane's album. He's amazing. So, but, um, I feel like it's hilarious to me because just a short few minutes ago, like I would say back in 09, 2010, my homie um, Wayne, who was at Atlantic, he was like, yo, Trav, he was like, you're going to be the only person doing R&B. And a lot mm -hmm. of people aren't going to be able to come back and do that sound because they're going to be switching to so much other yeah. stuff. And he was like, if you just stay the course and do that, you'll be straight. And I remember mm -hmm. back then I was getting clowned for wanting to work on some of those older projects. Because people were like, nobody worried about that. Yeah. Now I see the amount of people that send records for, say, like Dimitri, or people that send records to Case or, or to all the other people. Like, I'm sure Seuss's yeah. email is filled with people trying to get on these albums now because yeah. it's like you shunned those people 10 years ago and was like, I'm worried about getting on a case. <laughs> on a case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're like, I can't get on nobody. Can I please get on a case? <laughs> right. But it's like, right. you, 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 you did it to yourself, you know? Damn. That's Please crazy. Monica. <laughs> he has a song called Monica that's ignorant. Oh wow. <laughs> but, let me take it let me take this one step further then. So you get to work with these artists, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, I always see you doing your thing in the studio. You you're mm -hmm. putting in work. How about all those songs that you produce and then never end up even coming out? You know, how do you, how do you deal with that and, and process that as a producer? Honestly, now I'm thinking about doing a playlist. Like I'm really thinking about doing a Spotify playlist for the program. Really? Um yeah, I'm thinking about just dropping a whole playlist with a lot of these stuff, a lot of records that you don't hear. Mm. There's some that I'm going back and I'm like, I'm going back and I'm redoing some of them that right. people hadn't heard. Um, <clears throat> and doing some doing some like collabs with the artists, like getting some of the artists on records with people. Like <clears throat> I, had an, I had one record that Lucky Day had wrote and it ended up um, Raheem. Mm. So I went back and I just actually kind of reimagined it with both of them on the record together. The same as I think I posted not too long ago, um, the video I posted with with um, Tony Terry cutting a record that Case had already um, cut and wrote. So, you know, just kind of re reimagining some of these records that are in the vault, because there's so many, there's so many, like over the years, there's so many records. Right. Yeah, wow. so I'm really thinking about just doing a playlist like that. Just something, I'm not even really thinking about like, oh, do I push it? Do I try to make it something big. It's just something to put some of that music out there and, and show people like the behind the scenes here. That'll be dope, man. You know, mm -hmm. um, the legendary producer, Salam Remy, he did something like that. You know, he told us it was just kind of like a purge, like people need to hear this stuff. So he just, mm -hmm. just put it out literally like a plug you're talking about, a playlist on Spotify. I mean, mm -hmm. as fans, we love that type of thing. So, you know, if you decide to yeah. do that, we would definitely support that. Oh yeah, definitely. That's gonna, that's 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 cool. definitely what I'm what I'm thinking about doing. I've I've been talking to some different people, seeing what they're thinking. Cool, I think it'd be cool. fine. The heart and then, jumped up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I see that. <laughs> and then third part of this question, right? So this is insightful because we don't, you know, as R&B fans, we don't get to see how producers have to navigate. So, like, mm -hmm. say you, you start to work with the artist, you got a placement on the album. How do you get it to be a single? Like, say you placed a song on Raheem, you know. How do you ensure that becomes a single? You know, just for example, Raheem, I'm saying, like any artist. Mm -hmm. Can you make sure the song you put on is, you know? I think in my case, because a lot of times when I go in with people, I'm doing the bulk of the project. It's not, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I don't feel as much pressure yeah. as if I were trying to be aggressive and get placements. So for right. me, it's like, if I know I'm going and doing half the album, I'm just going to do my thing. And yeah. it makes me be able to support if I don't have the single, because I know that if they go find a song, they're still working with me and they're like, Hey, what do you think of this song? And I'll be, I can say, yep. Yep, I think that's the single, like, don't worry about what I did. <laughs> yep. That's right. Seuss. Seuss said it. You have to have that combo beforehand. Oh, he, Seuss is in here. Okay, cool. Yeah. See, he said it. 
you know, shout out to Seuss. I mean, that's that's speaking from experience right there, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it because I think that, um, I think it's lost on people, like, what an actual single is. And I think you get so yeah. you young people just throwing so many things out, hoping yeah. it sticks. Right. <clears throat> and it's like, no, you got to plan, you still got to plan an album out. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I had an interesting right. conversation with Tank in my studio, and he talked about that, like, the importance of social media and... You know what I'm saying? Like how that all goes together and, and how he how his thought process behind how he releases music or, or pushes music. Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting to see that. <clears throat> and he was talking about how other people need to, to, to come forwards with how they push music. Tank is an interesting one. You mentioned Tank. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know why you're laughing, but uh, it was a serious conversation. Yes, yes. Okay. Tank... You know, he got upset at us. Um, we weren't really fans of the sound he had come with in recent years. Um, just kind of more trendy. Yeah. Uh, we really like the new EP he has out. You know, it's definitely more traditional. He did it on purpose like that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't get your opinion, but he uh, we got why Tank did it. I mean, that traditional sound wasn't really what was popular. He did. He followed what was popular, and he was successful with it. More power to him. Doesn't mean it was for us as traditional R&B yeah. lovers, but... How did you view that whole thing and how, you know, Tank's trajectory, how it played out? I think, that, I think that he's in a weird place because he's a vocal beast. And I think, yeah. I think he's one of those, those artists who has written for other people and it's kind of like you've given your sound to other people. Right. And then you come back to your own material and it's like, where are you at? Like, how do you fit? It's like you're competing right. against yourself. And I think that I think that like he's so freaking dope that I think it's just like how where, how do, where does he fit like where does Tank fit because of of the fans you know I think it's just an odd place. I got you. I just think I, mean, I think it's such an odd place like where where does a Tank album fit or where does the Tank sound fit you know what I'm saying? Because so, he, can, he can pretty much murder anybody on stage with no auto tune. His no, I agree. Is, his pen is agree. dope. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just like where does he fit? You know, so if Tank, you know, came through the purple room, you said he was in the purple room, and he was like, "I need that, that trap beat. I need that Bryson Tiller, you know, sound." Are you are you giving him that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just out of curiosity, though, how would that conversation go? Like, if he came to you like that <clears throat> as a producer, how how would you approach that? I think that um. <clears throat> I would approach as a producer. I would let him know, look, look, no, this is, I think, how we should go. And I, I could easily show him <clears throat> which way we could go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it's a... I respect that. I don't think it's a tough conversation. Like, I think that's the problem with younger producers. That they, don't know how to, they don't know how to speak up because they don't have the musical IQ to mm -hmm. be able to go into a room and say, this is the sound. Look, if we do five of these, this is going to be the sound of your album. This is how we're going to be groundbreaking versus just being like, okay, just keep putting singles out. Hopefully it works, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because he's a freaking amazing. So I mean, it would it would be a producer conversation. It wouldn't even be right. just like a let's make a song conversation, right? Uh, I, I, I respect. Seuss that. Is, I love what Seuss is saying too. <laughs> he said he's a live performance artist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's not wrong. So yeah, but you made me think of something interesting. Like while we're all in quarantine here. We're having these battles. Let's get mm -hmm. vocal battles. I mean, you, you, Tank's a vocal beast. I would love to hear vocal face-offs. Yeah. I mean, that would be pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. And let's vote on the winner. Because, we. I mean, I love R&B. I love vocals. Mm -hmm. And there's some vocal beasts out there. I mean, tons of them. Man, let's just hear it. Yeah, I'd rather, I, I mean. See that. Like, I would love to see an R&B battle like that. Like, just yeah. come straight in, give me a minute of your of one of your records, and just go versus right. playing the record. Like, show, <laughs> show them. Yeah. yeah, and then I, I really liked, I don't know if you caught this, but Tamia and Deborah Cox did a, uh, like, a virtual duet, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought that was super dope. They covered a Whitney Houston song, you know, instead of all these battles, let's have some collaboration, you know, I thought that was yeah. super, I haven't really seen too much of that either, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, it would be, like, that would be kind of cool to put together, like, if somebody could just say, like, okay, as a producer, like, pull a, pull a, pull some of us together, like, say if you pull 10 of us together, like, a like shoot, who would you like? Gosh, um, I'm trying to think. Like, who would be just like an amazing, amazing person? I mean, if you can't get Teddy Riley, something. 
<laughs> Who are we talking about? Producer or singer? Yeah. Like Troy Taylor. Full Troy, full Troy, Troy Taylor. Some of the producers, and let's make the artist collab. Like we send a beat to somebody, and they on their live, laying their part. Send it to somebody else, they lay their part, and we put songs together. It would, it would be an ill coronavirus <laughs> playlist. Like, yeah, because people would see the creative process in terms of people doing it on their live. And then they would see it when the song all comes together because they may not even know who we're actually going to put on certain songs. Jermaine like, Dupree, I like that. I like that suggestion right there. Jermaine Dupree. I like that. He'll get in one of these battles soon enough. Somebody keeps saying Jermaine Dupree versus Puffy. I'm like. Puffy? Wow. Yeah, that's what I, I mean, said. I was like, wow. I mean, yeah, they can have the whole Hitman, though. I mean, Puffy, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, Jermaine's a, Jermaine's a beast by himself. And I'm like, you know, Puff's ear is unmatched. So yeah. I, I don't know that I would do that. It would definitely be entertaining. I'll say that it, much. It would definitely. They would both make it entertaining. <laughs> I would. I would. I would watch just for that. Yeah. Puff is gonna make it extra, and Jermaine hopefully will make it extra. Right. Absolutely. Let me let me ask you this, man. As a producer. Yeah. This whole coronavirus thing happening in the world. Um, how is it affecting your, you know, you as a producer? Are you still able to, to get work in, or or are artists not able to get to you like it used to? Um, the artists are stuck at home, but I'm still here emailing stuff out, sending stuff to people. Mm -hmm. Everybody's staying creative, <clears throat> you know. Right. I talked to Dimitri on text uh, a few days ago. I talked to Cisco. I talked to Case mm -hmm. earlier, you know. Talked to Raheem a couple nights ago. Um, talked to Jay Holiday earlier today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, everybody's just keeping their heads up. I think right now you need to see more of, like, what you're doing with interviewing everybody because it's just better to put positive out there. Like, people right. need to see that it's going to be okay because right now Big Mamas suck. Let's just say it. Big Mamas <laughs> suck, Okay. Yeah, we need big yeah. mamas. We need somebody to go over to take a camera, go to the old folks' home, and start talking to some of these 85 and 95-year-old big mamas, the real grandmamas that's going to tell you, no, it's going to be okay. We've been through this. <laughs> You're going to be all right. We need, to, yeah. we need to hear more of that. We don't need to be like, oh, my God, Trump is going to kill us. No, we need to hear, like, it's going to be all right. We, <laughs> yeah. more, we good. Don't even worry about it. We're going to be good. Oh, man. So Let's not good. turn this political now, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Don't bring up Trump. <laughs> oh, no, we don't want to do that. Don't, nobody hashtag Trump. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> All right, but, let, but yeah, let me ask like, you. I think mm -hmm. that um, I think that the creatives just need to keep speaking out and and putting positive out there, and like we got to just keep keep everybody's heads going. You know, keep everybody's heads in the game. You know, it's gonna be okay. Right. We're gonna get through it. People gonna get back out on the road. We're gonna keep staying. Hundred percent. Yeah, you seeing more people post with them hanging with their kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Imagine that. Oh gosh. No okay. comment. Further. I'm like, I'm waiting on Sue to tell you about Case uh, homeschooling his daughter. That's what I need Sue to jump in. Wow. And about Case wow. home homeschooling his daughter. <laughs> Shout out to my guy Winslow in the house. Thanks for checking in, man. No doubt. Um, final question for you. Then, I, then you know that we're just about out of time. But yeah, um, if you could have any pick up, let's do a male and a female artist. If you mm -hmm. could bring any male and female artist to the Purple Room to work with on a record, who would you mm -hmm. choose? One of each. Mm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Sue's got to make it happen for me. It's a tough. It's a tough one to <laughs> answer on the spot. You know. You know what though? Because I I've had two vocal beasts in the studio already that were like amazing. Like the the boys and men session. Like having Wanye in the studio. Mm, wow. And this was during the time we were still getting um like I had Demetria in there with me and at first she was like oh my god because of what he was doing, and she stepped up so crazy vocally. Like you would not believe that woman is. Right. That's why I ride for her so hard, and I'm I'm like I really want people to see her what she does on a new album because she's doing some. Her voice is ready, but vocally, I mean, I would probably say like maybe get back in with Tank. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, Chris Brown maybe, maybe because I like some of what he did. I I actually had a good experience having um Jacquees in the studio, like me actually getting a chance to vocal produce him and see what his voice can really do, versus what you hear. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to big. hide my, uh, I'm trying to hide my uh, disdain here. But <laughs> no, it's I mean, hard. as a producer, I'm just amazed that sometimes, like when I hear people's voices versus what people say about them. Like I remember back in the days, like being in the studio with like Keisha Cole, and people were like, "Oh, she's singing off key, and she's doing this," and I'm like, "I've yeah. been in the studio with her; she can sing." You know, like if they stop putting a lot of reverb on her voice, and you really heard the raspiness and the the real soul of her voice, you would be like, "Wow." Um, I would love to be in the studio with like a Brandy, Brandy, shout out Brandy. It's a good choice. Come on home, Brandy. Come on. Come on <laughs> Listen, home. man. I'm I'm not a producer, but you want to hear my picks? Sure. If I was a producer, sure. Number one, 
And once again, shout out to my guy Winslow. But I'm going with Stevie Wonder. How could you oh. not bring Stevie Wonder into the studio? I gave you any any oh, artist out there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know. Yeah, Stevie, definitely. I mean, definitely. I didn't know we were going back that far. I didn't know we're we going, going as back. far <laughs> living. I didn't know you we could even you could even name an artist who's no longer living. We'll find the vocals. We'll make it happen. You know what? I, I would I would love to get back in with Charlie Wilson again. Oh, that's a good pick. His vocals that's a, that's are crazy. Absolutely. And, K. Michelle, come on home. K. Michelle, come home. <laughs> Had a great time with her early in her career. Yeah. Yeah. My female pick would be probably Faith Evans. Oh, yeah. I can't go wrong. Can't, can't go wrong there. You Another can't vocal wrong. beast. But Brandy yeah. was a good pick, too, though. I mean. Yeah, but Brandy, definitely. Brandy would be my – Brandy's my – Brandy's my 1B, because if I say anybody less than Demetria, I will get in trouble. <laughs> But Brandy, yeah, she's 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 definitely my one B. Did he Listen, say Michael Jackson and the and the Amigo? Oh no! <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. We get banned from the internet for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing John Legend. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Legend. We're no. not. No. You know how I feel about John Legend? No. Okay, that's all you need to know. <laughs> okay, cool. Like, you can't max John Legend in faith. No. Wait, but you know who I did talk to, um, and I have talked to him off and on, um, that I think is slept on vocally? Wayne Who's Brady. That? Wayne Brady. There's out of left field. Go back and listen to his album, that single, FWB. Actually, the whole album, he is slept on. I've like actually heard horse. this before. Believe it or not, I've heard this before. Dark I haven't checked horse. it out, but I've heard this. Yeah, definitely a dark horse. Right. Yeah. If I can, it if makes I can, me... If I can make it happen, that would be something cool to see in the purple room. I, I've, we've spoken off and on. Really? Let's see if I can make it happen. Mm. <laughs> we were just we were just thinking about um because someone's asking about he runs we have Jamie Fox, <clears throat> you know, another actor who is also in Jamie Fox is actually a really dope vocalist. People don't realize that. I, I mean, if people you really understand how dope he really is. Yeah. So, but that made yeah. me think of him. Yeah. So <laughs> somebody said he you know he can sing, but I haven't heard the album. No, he's amazing. Job yeah, I mean, I haven't checked it out. Winslow, check it out. Get back to me, please. Go That's your homework. Go to FWB. I'm telling you. <laughs> listen to – Sean Garrett is in the building. I need – you got the pen in the building, dog. What's up, Sean? There's somebody – listen. If you want to make a collaboration happen, get me and Sean Garrett in the studio, and I guarantee you we will get you the next 10 years of R&B. Hmm. I said it. What? I said it. I said we today, with the ramen shirt on, Sean, we're calling you out <laughs> on, on live. We got to do an Instagram live and let them know. Let's do this. Let's just make it happen. I got an interesting story to tell you, Sean. And whenever we talk, we got we got something that we really got to go go through, got to talk about. And you're going to be like, for real? <laughs> Matter of fact, when we get off, I'm going to DM you my phone number. <laughs> Shout out to Sean Garrett. You know, big supporter of what oh, we do. You know, I got so we, we love to support him as well. Um, yes, legend. Man. A legend right here. So. Yes, you know. let's get on live. Yes, let's so. do that, sir. <laughs> cool, cool. So, Gosh. yeah, he's but. an amazing. He's an amazing talent. He's an amazing talent. Wow. You know, Sean, I was just listening to Avery Wilson's live, and I know you. You were the one who helped put him on. You know, you know talent, Sean. So, always glad to support who, you, man. Who would be Sean's top two? We're having the conversation. Top female and top male that you could get in the studio with and do a collaboration with. Who would that be, Sean? I, yeah, Sean, I, if you could pick any right now, if you could if you could choose a male and a female artist to have in the studio right now to do a record with, who's your two choices? That was what we were discussing <laughs> before you got on. I would love to see who he says. I mean, he's worked with the with the yeah, greats right. already. So <laughs> it, it'll actually be more interesting to hear from him on that, but Yeah. Yeah. It would be that would be interesting. So yeah, man, this this is this is interesting. I want to see what he's gonna say, but it's definitely oh wow, yeah. <laughs> tough one. Yeah. It's a tough one. It is a tough one on the spot. It's a tough question to answer, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, if it, if it makes it easier, Sean, I chose Brandy and, and sort of Demetrius, my favorites. <laughs> I chose. No, I went with Stevie Wonder and Faith Evans. So yeah. I don't know if Sean has done a record with Stevie Wonder. But God, wow! If, man, if I just hope we get a record with Stevie Wonder. That would just listen. Urban AC would be done for like the rest of the I, year. I'm gonna put this out there and say I just hope we get another Stevie Wonder record at some point. After, you know, 
You know, he's getting up there. Old man that they retired before I actually had a chance to work with, and I would have loved to get in the studio with Anita exactly. Baker. Anita Baker. Oh wow! Imagine Anita Baker in the purple. <laughs> get her on one of my beats. I'm just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have to be a mid. It have to be a mid. But yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. I I actually have to give you give you you a shout out, Travis. You know, you. You know, out of all the producers out there, have been one of the, the really the forefront of you know keeping R and B that more traditional sound and what we love, mm -hmm. and we truly appreciate that what you're doing. No. You know, there's not many who really care to uphold to that sound. Mm -hmm. I asked you that same question earlier, mm -hmm. and you kept it totally real, and you, that was the answer we wanted to hear. Yes. So we we fully respect you, man. What you're doing, Thanks, and man. Um, just you know, love what you're doing, and, and the support you give us. We love it, man. So hey, I wish you could bring Sean in on a three-way with us because this would be an, this would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking, man. He's thinking real he's hard. Thinking. <laughs> He'll come up with something. I know him. I know I it. Think you got him with the, with the Stevie Wonder one. I think I think you got him with the Stevie Wonder one. Yeah, that's that's just a, that's that that's an amazing one though. Like I said, that's that's an amazing amazing conversation. Like I'm almost like, what would have been like? What would her career would have been like? if we'd have got five more years of Aaliyah and she'd have had a chance to get oh, with Sean, like with Sean's family, damn. what would that Sean. have been? Sean would probably made the club banger. Like, we would we would really be having a real conversation about Aaliyah versus a Music would be totally different. Huh? Music would be totally different right now, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Because she would have been such an influence as she continued that people would have moved to that sound. And it had been and early my, in his you know, career, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, damn. damn. <laughs> You're right. But I just want to say about, you brought up Brandy. Mm -hmm. Dude, we haven't had a Brandy album in, in, it's been over eight years. Do you realize that? Wow. It's it's not fair. I mean, I feel like we're robbed as, as R&B lovers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you see her live, but yeah, that would be a dope, a dope, um, another dope album. I would love to, I would love to get in with her. I've, I've been asked to send some records through like um, E1, but <laughs> 